back in the atmosphere with the doubts of Jupiter in her head. All right, tonight's video is about the terrestrial planets. I wanted to start with another video, a video out of a video, of just to give you an idea about the size of planets. Uh, so starting right here. Starting with a picture of the moon. Compared with our Mercury. So pause the video right there. Hopefully you noticed that the first planets were much, much smaller than the second set of planets. That's the difference between terrestrial and gas planets, gas giant planets. Also, hopefully you see how large stars really can be. Okay, so from class, we've had a pretty good discussion about uh, planets, what planets are, why Pluto is no longer considered a planet, and according to the International Astronomical Union, a planet must be one of these, have to have these three uh, characteristics. So this is your foldable that we're going to fold out in just a minute and begin our notes for the terrestrial planets. So this is the definition of a planet. It, one must orbit the sun, have, have a large enough mass so that it it can assume a hydrostatic equilibrium. Basically means it can form a round shape because of its own mass, like the Earth and the rest of the planets. And number three, have cleaned, basically um, absorbed or because of gravity pulled in the um, uh, rocks and matter around its orbit in space. And that's where um, Pluto begins to have some problems. It's not really a round shape, it's more like a potato or an egg, and it hasn't really cleaned the area around it. There are many, many um, smaller objects like Pluto, and even larger, that are still remaining in the area. So, we're going to fold it out, pull it out all the way to the base, and I'm actually going to move my notebook so it's less in the way, and go to the very closest planet, which is Mercury. Mercury is pretty small, a little bit bigger than the moon. Um, in colored pencil, uh, doesn't matter really what color, I'm going to choose purple, and I'm going to label this Mercury. Okay, Mercury is our smallest planet. It has no moons and no atmosphere. Mercury uh, has the largest eccentricity, uh, meaning that it has the least circular orbit of any of the planets, uh, meaning when it revolves around the sun, it is kind of all over the place. It's not a perfect little circle. 
Um, Mercury was actually named after the Roman god. Uh, he was Mercury, the Roman god Mercury. He was a messenger to the gods. Uh, Mercury looks very similar to what the moon does. And we're going to draw about what size it is um, and all the rest of the planets according. So Mercury is about this size. If the sun were about an 8-inch ball. That's Mercury. Pretty lame. Um, moving on to our next terrestrial planet. That would be Venus. So we're going to slide over to our next box. You can see that there's my box here. Turn the light off. Maybe that'll be a little bit better. Uh, in the same color, and you'll see why in a little bit, Venus. Okay. Often it is called Earth's twin uh, because they're the same size. It has an atmosphere. The gravity is similar. Uh, but Venus is actually named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. Um, besides the moon, it's actually the brightest natural object in the sky. Uh, so we're going to call this Earth twin. Because same size, roughly the same size. Um, it has an atmosphere, which is unusual. And its gravity is similar. The interesting thing about Venus, though, is that it does not rotate like the Earth. It has an opposite rotation, opposite of the rest of the planets. So if you want to think about the Earth, if it were to be rotating counterclockwise, Venus would be rotating clockwise. We're going to draw a little picture. Um, Venus, also similar looking to the moon, uh, but with not as many craters and impacts. So I'm going to draw a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to outline it in some black just so you can actually see. Uh, and that's a little too big. Should be a little bit smaller. Yeah, more like that. Okay, the yellow inside of there. Next planet, my very educated, so that would be e us, the third rock from the sun. That is the Earth. All right, so hopefully we already know a little bit about the Earth. Uh, something special about the Earth is it has water. Also, it has life. We live here. Many things live here. It's very unusual as what we've found so far. There may be life elsewhere, maybe on uh, one of Jupiter's moons. Um, it does have an atmosphere as well. That is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen that is crucial to us but not all living things uh, I'm gonna draw, draw that as uh, a blue is where the blue planet here we go that big so you can see we're getting a little larger Venus Earth are a little larger than Mercury uh, now the last planet is Mars Last little square here. I'm still in purple. Mars. Mars is named after the god of war. Mars is a red planet and it is named after the war god.
Mars does have an atmosphere, but it's not one that we would survive on. Because it is 95% carbon dioxide. That's what we breathe out. One other interesting thing, it has the largest volcano, not the most active, but the largest volcano in the solar system. That is Olympus Mons. It is huge. Compared to our biggest volcanoes on Earth, they look tiny in comparison. Uh, we're going to draw Mars since it's the red planet. We're going to draw it in red. It is smaller than the Earth and Venus, but larger than Mercury. The last thing we're going to cover is not a planet, but something in between the terrestrial planets and the gas planets, and that is the asteroid belt. So we move over one more square, call this the asteroid belt. I'm going to do this in a separate color because the first four planets were terrestrial planets. This is not a planet. This is the technically the main asteroid belt. This is large rocky bodies uh, that are spinning around in space and there are hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them. Um, they have some very, very large ones, as uh, large as 400 kilometers, a diameter of more than 400 kilometers, um, and uh, even larger than that. So I'm going to put a bunch of little dots to represent many, many rocky bodies that are flying around in space in between Mars and the next planet, Jupiter, which we change type. So the asteroid belt, the main asteroid belt. So the reason that the asteroid belt exists, most likely, uh, the best theory is that a protoplanet, uh, a smaller planet, as they're orbiting around the sun, rather than smashing together and creating one large planet um, that actually, actually has so much energy that when they collided they actually ripped each other apart into these smaller rocky objects. Uh, so that's it for tonight. See you in class. Little exit music. Notice the theme. A champagne supernova, a champagne supernova in the sky.